Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this third gen Amazon Fire TV Cube. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So in this video, I'm just going to be unboxing this and I'll do a quick setup. I do want to say that when I bought this, I checked off the little box that will do the easier setup. So when this connects up to my network, it will automatically configure itself. So I'm not going to walk through the whole configuration, but I know there are people that are considering buying this and they want to know kind of what's in the box. So quick features on this. This does have Wi-Fi 6E as 4K HDR. I'm not going to be testing the Wi-Fi in this video, but I'll probably make a new video and I'll put that in my Amazon playlist below. On the side, it says hands-free with ALEXA, Wi-Fi 6E tri-band. So that's gonna have the 2.4, the five gigahertz, and the six gigahertz Wi-Fi, 4K Ultra HD, high dynamic range, Dolby Vision Atmos, octa-core processor, HDMI in, There's some text on the back, and here's the what's included, has the Fire TV Cube, the voice remote, two AAA batteries, then the power adapter. You need high-speed internet, HD or 4K TV with HDMI input, and then the HDMI cable. So I'll pull the tape on the bottom here to open it. So here's the device itself, it's quite heavy. There we go, it's a cube shape. Here's the power supply. When I missed this on the side here, it says Fire TV Cube proper placement, unobstructed and facing where you sit, at least one foot away from speakers, not in a closed cabinet. Power supply is 15 watts. So here we have the output is 12 volts at 1.25 amps. Pull this off. This packing material is kind of a weird kind of waxy, papery kind of plastic. I don't know. It's interesting. So this has a barrel jack on the end. This comes with two industrial alkaline batteries. And here we have the remote. And that's everything in the box. So this remote has the Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu buttons on it. We can slide the back open. So you slide it partway down, then you lift it off, and then the batteries will go in here, like so. We'll place that back on, slide it back in place. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this. So it has rubber on the bottom. It has a speaker grill all the way around. On top we have our plus minus, and then we have our mute, and I think that's the activate button. On the back we have the HDMI in and HDMI out. So you can connect this up to your TV, and you can plug something else in here. That's really nice for these modern TVs that don't seem to have a lot of inputs on them. So if you have a video game console or something, you can put that in here. So if you have all of your HDMI ports filled on your TV, you can unplug something, plug it into this HDMI in, and then take the HDMI out into your TV. We have IR extender. That's an accessory you can get with this. So you can use this to control other devices, I think like cable boxes and stuff. We have power, we have USB, and we have network. Now the wired network on here is going to be 100 megabit. That may seem slow to people. The Wi-Fi on this is probably going to be way faster than this network cable. But I will say, I tend to like to use wired network when I can. Ultra HD 4K uses around 25 megabits per second. So this network could probably run about four 4K streams simultaneously. Anytime you can plug in a device like this, you're just freeing up the Wi-Fi for other devices. But it's a nice compact look. Then inside the box is the power supply. It's like we have a little box here. I think this is just a spacer. Yeah, that's just a spacer there. Then behind here we have some documentation. This is important information. So this looks like safety information, compliance information. And here's a little, looks like a manual here. And this has a little more information. So we have the microphone on off, microphones are on the top, volume buttons, action button, and the light bar is in the front. And then we have the ports in the back. Here's advice on positioning it. It says place it at least a foot away from speakers with the ports facing away from you. You should not place it in a closed cabinet. And this talks about controlling devices in a closed cabinet. You can use that IR extender. And this talks about how to hook it up and how to connect it to your TV. And here are the buttons on the remote, how to use ALEXA with it. Some more information there, okay. Okay, so here I have a TV. We're looking at the back of it, and I have three HDMI ports here. I have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and HDMI 3. So depending on your setup, you may want to use one port or the other. Where I put this specific TV, it has lots of room behind it, so I could probably use HDMI 3, which I would probably use so it's not sticking out the side of the TV. I guess I should show this is the side of the TV here. So if you put a cord in here, it could potentially hang off the side. Now you can get specialty cords that have right angles on them and things, but if you want a clean setup, I would get a cable that is going to be the shortest length that will fit. And then also make sure you get a cable that supports whatever you're using. This is only a 1080p TV, so I don't need 4K support. I think this cable would support 4K, but you do want to make sure your cables are compatible with your TV and the Fire TV. So I'll plug my cable in here, and then the other end will go in the back of the Fire TV. Okay, so I plug this into my TV, 
and I missed the record on that, but it wanted me to hit the home button. So I hit the home button and then it asked what language I wanted. I said English and then it rebooted and it's updating. So that's typical of a device like this. When you first get it, it will install the latest updates. So you have the latest software on it. It says, welcome to Fire TV. I'll hit got it. I'm watching. And we have the main menu up. So right off the bat, this seems very fast. This has a very fast processor in it, so that's nice. Now if we go to inputs here, we have HDMI and media player. I'll do a quick test. I'll plug a USB drive in the back in the USB port. Then I'll go down here to media player. I'll allow. And I'll play a video. Okay. So this is a 4K video playing on a 1080p TV. So that's very cool. I'll hit the menu icon. It doesn't seem to have an eject, so I'll just pull it out. So on that same menu, we could go to the HDMI, and if we had a game system plugged in, we could use that. But I just wanted to go over the basics of unboxing this and setting it up. Super easy to do. So the people that might want this are people that want the high performance device, like if you're doing any gaming on the Amazon system, this could be good for that. This can make for a pretty clean setup if you want ethernet because it has the ethernet port built right in. So if you have the Fire TV stick and have ethernet, you have to use a special adapter and it can get kind of messy. This has that in. This also has the six gigahertz Wi-Fi. So if you have a congested Wi-Fi network and you have that 6E equipment, this will run on that frequency. You have that HDMI in. So this could be good for people that have minimal HDMI ports. And then you can also plug your media in there if you have a media library. So I'll probably be making other videos on this and check out my playlist for those. But that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.